This is the first part of a series aimed at people interested in using databases in their Unreal projects. I cover what relational databases might offer you as a game developer, and a few reasons why you might want to start using them. There's going to be a lot of generalizing and simplified layman terms, so if you are experienced with database things, don't get your panties in a bunch. It's aimed at helping newbies get on board. So why would you want to include a relational SQL database in your game design? <laughs> You get more options for how to do things you might already do, possibilities for doing interesting new things, you can make some development tasks a little easier, and you get extra post-deployment possibilities. You can use them for simple things like high score tables, user preferences and settings, achievements and achievement tracking, and more complex things like deep RPG systems including crafting, resources, custom spells or weapons, quest systems, advanced NPC behavior, flexible character dialogue system, player customizable mapping features, and well, basically anything which is underpinned by data. And if you haven't realized it yet, everything in programming is underpinned by some kind of data. If your only wish is to make a copy of whatever the current arena PvP trend is, can databases help you? Sure they can, but you probably don't need them. Just fire up UE5, open the Lyra starter game, grab your mum's credit card and head to the marketplace to start asset swapping your way to the cookie cutter PvP clone of your dreams. You suck. No, you suck. I slept with your mum. Yeah? Well, I slept with your dad. If you're still watching, probably means you want to make something fresh, interesting, clever or dynamic. Something which tries to do new things with AI or takes existing genres like RPG or non-linear narratives and pushes them in new directions. If that sounds like you, then relational databases might just be the tool you need to help you realise some of those ideas. So what are they? You know something about Unreal's data tables, and you're reasonably competent with either C++ or Blueprints. And you wonder, couldn't I just do the equivalent of this relational database business by myself using those things? And the quick answer is yes, but you shouldn't. Because apart from being a huge drain on your time, you really don't need to. Relational databases are created to efficiently store and retrieve data. And because that's their purpose, they generally tend to be pretty good at it. Most of them have been written and refined over decades by some very clever people who dedicated significant amounts of their time to the task instead of writing video games. So why is a relational database better choice than data tables and custom code? Relational databases give you a lot of functionality that you don't have to worry about writing and testing yourself, which potentially saves you a bunch of time and effort. And probably the big one, relationships. I've worked with Unreal and written code where I needed to manually make relationships between data table data in code. You have a record in the first table, you take some ID from it, you go to the next table, you search for the ID in one of the properties there, and so on. The code is potentially slow if you had a lot of entries because the data isn't indexed in any way, but that doesn't really bother me. The bigger problem, I think, is that you can create records in those tables that don't match up with each other, and you might not notice until after your game ships, meaning your players end up with broken quests or other problems. Using an SQL query to extract and optionally shape your data retrieval can really free up your code for needing to do any of those things itself. That means C++, which is more focused on the logic of your game, or blueprints that are, well, less of a mess to look at. Add to that the ability for SQL databases to ensure that records in different tables always match up and other rules you can provide, such as requiring certain items to always be provided, others to be optional, and specifying default values. And you can start to see that you get a more robust handling of your data, and that hopefully leads to less bugs in the long run. So how difficult is this relational database business? SQL, which stands for Structured Query Language, is incredibly powerful for something which at its core revolves around only four commands. Insert, update, delete, and select. That's right, although SQL has plenty of features and each specific platform may support a bunch of additional functions, those four commands are the basic pillars of how you use it. Finding examples or help with problems is pretty easy. There are huge communities supporting each specific database engine. Okay then, what about cost? Well, if you have your heart set on using one of the proprietary corporate database engines, you're going to have to pay for it. However, if you are able to use a locally hosted database for your game, such as SQLite or Microsoft SQL Server Express, then the good news is you won't have to pay anything. SQLite is completely open source. SQL Server Express isn't, but it is free to use. 
Because they don't require dedicated servers, you don't have to pay for them. This makes it perfectly viable to use a relational database for even offline single player or couch co-op games. To give you a better idea of how you might use it, let's take a look at some of the more simple things you could do in your game projects. Let's think about the person playing our games, the player. Many times we have a unique identifier for the player, it might be their Windows username on a PC game, or on a console something like a PlayStation PSN ID or Xbox Live ID. Maybe on a PC game you let people create different users, so they can have separate playthroughs. Also different people in one household who all use the same PC with the same account can have different game profiles. Nothing clever about it really, and by itself certainly not enough justification to add a database system to a game project. I mean just storing a few user records, maybe a name or an email, whatever. That's like 5 minutes work in C++, serialize it as JSON and dump it to a text file. Job done. Ok fine, let's build on that. Consider user preferences. These could be anything. Input mappings, UI colour choices, preferred font scaling, whatever. We can make a table with the default values for each preference, and another table for any preferences which should be overridden by a user specified value. A fairly simple bit of SQL will then give us a user's set of preferences, listing the default values when no user preference exists, and replacing it with the user specified value if one is found. Your C++ or Blueprint code won't need to care either way, it will just ask the database for that user's preferences and it will get back the data. It also makes it fairly simple for a team of developers working on the code to add new preferences. Just add a new default value to the database and then in code call the function to get the preference, specify the user and the name of the preference they want to get. You don't need to check out any other code or modify an enum. You could even write a little utility used at compile time to ensure that all the code asking for preferences is asking for ones which actually exist in your database. Unreal has a few features which can also help out with that sort of checking. And because we built this on top of our multiple users table, it will work no matter how many players are involved. The next example is something like league tables or categorised high scores. We stick with our player table once again, and we add a game metric table. Basically, each record in this table is a score of best or worst value that the player can have. Things like most PvP kills, longest winning streak, times called stealing, most gold accumulated, that kind of thing. Then we add the Hall of Fame table, and as each player plays the game, we can record those metrics against the player's ID. Once again, the SQL will help us, letting the game code simply send it a value for a given player and category, and the database only performing the update if the value is better or worse than the previously recorded value. We can now easily show the player their own current details, and we can also show how they rank against any other players we have. Next we have achievements. Many platforms have the notion of achievements. Some leave them completely up to the developer to implement, others take a far more strict approach forcing you to do everything through their own API, assumedly to thwart cheating. But regardless of this, let's look at how we could use a database to implement our own achievement system. Again we have our player table, and we add an achievement table. The achievement table will have a list of each achievement available in the game, and probably some text description and other data, maybe a link to an icon asset or something like that. Then we have the player achievement table, which works in a pretty similar way to the previous Hall of Fame example. It links a player record with each achievement that they have made some progress with. There won't even be a record in this table unless the player has made some progress in that achievement. Our data access layer code, in C++ or Blueprints, will have a function to update a player's achievement. We give that function the achievement ID, and the player ID, and maybe a percentage increase or simply a value, depending how you want the achievement to work. And it maybe makes a calculation first, before it creates or updates the record in the database by calling some SQL, and optionally returns a value to the calling code, or triggers an on-screen notification if the player has just completed that achievement. And with most SQL engines, we don't even need to fill in things like the completion date. The database can do it automatically when it sees the progress percentage reach 100%. And don't forget, if you want to show the player their achievements in-game, SQL makes it easy to list them, and easy to put them in any order you like, by name, by progress, completion date, or any combination of these things. Those were some pretty simple examples. More than anything, just to ease you gently into the idea of using databases in terms of games. Time to step it up a gear and get a bit more involved. This is going to be something I made up on the spot just for this video, 
to illustrate the point. I'm not saying it's well thought through, or even something you would want to use in a game. So buckle up, paper bag under the seat if you need it. Let's think about a game with NPCs. Probably an RPG, but hey, maybe you have some cool ideas for other genres. In this game, instead of just assigning them a number, we want our NPCs to have a more complex system for their attitudes towards the player. So we have our NPCs, and we make a table for that. Each NPC has an ID, and you get the unique ID thing by now. It's probably just a number that the database assigns to each new record we make. We stick a bunch of other stuff in the NPC table. Their name, maybe which meshes we want to use for them, which asset directory to use for their dialogue, things like that. We have another table called Job, and it's filled with various trades that each NPC, and possibly the player, have in our game. If it's a fantasy game, you might have carpenters, historians, pig farmers, ap apothec apothec chemists. If it's a sci-fi game, you might have spacers, pilots, astro navigators, etc. The specifics don't really matter right now. So then we have a table called NPC job, which connects those two tables. And you guessed it, it indicates the job or jobs that each NPC has. We have another table for the different character species in our game, fairies and trolls and whatnot if it's a fantasy one, something like trigellian lizard people, cyborg, hive robots, and probably bog standard humans if it's a sci-fi game. This time, we don't even need a joining table because we decide that each NPC can only be of one given race because we have absolutely no idea how we would code the gameplay for such things. We're also somewhat reluctant to think about how a 500 pound troll and a 20 ounce fairy might make babies. Love you, fairy. Love you, trolly. So anyway, we go back to our NPC table and we add a species ID field to it and we link it directly to the character species table. I don't want to go into details about specific quest systems here, but suffice to say, we have a player quest table which tracks the quests the player has done and their outcomes. We decided in our game, certain sections of the population are influenced by wealth, so we add a table which details the different levels of wealth a player can achieve. Then we add a bunch more tables to relate this all together. NPC player job disposition, job quest disposition, species quest disposition, NPC quest disposition and job wealth disposition. And we connect them all up like this. What all these individual disposition tables allow us to do is store different values for each item. So for example, NPC player job disposition lets us say, if the player is a member of a certain profession and the NPC they're interacting with is a member of a certain profession, then that will influence their disposition by a certain amount. That lets us do certain things like say, Merchants, for example, have a more positive view of carpenters, but perhaps look down on pig farmers. The three tables that connect the quest table do the same, but as a direct result of what the player has done in a quest. Species quest disposition, for example, would have a positive value for fairies if the player had successfully saved the crystal fairy grotto in that specific quest but maybe a negative value for trolls against the same quest if the player saved the fairies by massacring their troll neighbours. The NPC quest disposition goes even further, allowing you to say that regardless of any group sentiment, specific NPCs are influenced by a specific quest's outcome. And we link the job wealth disposition to the job table, which effectively says certain jobs are influenced less or more by a player being wealthy or poor meaning that merchants, for example, have more respect for people who have a lot of wealth than people who don't. We can then write an SQL statement, which will find any records in all of these tables that would somehow affect a given NPC's attitude towards the player's character, sum them all together, and return you the current NPC player attitude value for that specific moment in time. And the SQL would be perfectly happy if we hadn't entered any records for that NPC, his jobs, etc. It would just return a flat zero, exactly the same as if the quests the player had done were of no interest to them. Going further, the same SQL query could also give you the highest and lowest values of those individual modifiers. So even if the overall result was positive, the NPC might still say, Hmm, I'm not sure where I stand with you. Because the factors affecting their decision are all over the place. Let's call it volatility. You might use something like this to add more interest or realism to your games. We now have a system where a specific NPC might offer the player better information because they know the player is wealthy. Or even an NPC that refuses to speak to the player because the player is a Trigellian lizard person and that NPC is racist. 
And you can even change these modifiers during play. What if the player helps a massive merchant caravan avoid troll bandits by getting the city's homeless population to agree to act as informal lookouts? Maybe now merchants in general are less inclined to look down on the impoverished. Or conversely, maybe the player chooses to resolve the same issue by killing every random troll they can find, even nice ones. No. Perhaps now trolls not only despise the player, but merchants in general. And whereas before they only robbed the caravans, now they leave nothing but bleached bones and ash behind. Cheery. Okay, so if you followed me this far, you're hopefully buzzing with some of your own ideas which you think are much better than the BS I just talked about. That's fine, but you're going to need some kind of database to get started with. If you don't already have something in place, and particularly if you're thinking in terms of single player or couch co-op type games, I highly recommend you try SQLite. It's a bit different than most databases, as rather than being a standalone engine, it's a C library that gets compiled into your game code. Personally, I think SQLite is great. The amount you can achieve with it, all without needing to mess around installing servers, is such a time saver. It's free, and I would definitely recommend it as the go-to option for anyone interested in adding relational database SQL goodness to their Unreal game projects, particularly as the Unreal Engine ships with plugins that handle the C library part for you. That's also why it's what I specifically chose to focus on in the other videos in this series, where I talk about how to get started using the SQLite plugins and then building a framework to make using SQLite in Unreal a little bit nicer.